Welcome to the Danjing Star League Season 3, Round of 8, Day 1. This is a bind versus best. I am your host, Bisu Dagger. We just watched game number 1, and now we're moving on to game number 2. Mind lost the last game to best. Best brought out some massive carriers, and now we're on Polaris Rhapsody. And we've got the cross bond map. With the best down at the bottom right hand, in mind, he's going to be represented at the top left. As I said before, please bear with me. It has been almost a year since I have casted, and I am just as rusty as possible. But I am trying to finally get back into the game again. I, I did a lot of casting over the past half decade, you know, between... Uh, the Kongu Star League, the Vance Star League, uh, four or five Sonic Star Leagues, Africa Star Leagues, it, it, GOM TV Classic Season 4. It has been a, quite an experience, and I just I can't give it up. I seem to be just too addicted, not to just watching StarCraft, but casting StarCraft also. It just brings another level of enjoyment to me to be able to just cast over, and I'm happy to provide you guys an English cast where there isn't one. And I, I just think that these tournaments like the Denjing Star League is so underrated and it's highly important that we can give recognition to these tournaments because it's what we have outside of the ASL to really just gauge the ability of these players. We can't just rely on sponsored matches. I think that these organized tournaments are, are just gravely important. So, we see that the bunker is coming down on the low ground. Polaris Rhapsody is just a, a very interesting map all around. Look at this probe coming out. So, the observer is just focused on it too. Let's go ahead and follow this storyline. What's it going to be doing? Heading over. It's going to see the, the barracks, of course. And the gateway is finishing up. Gas is being built too. What is... The objective for best in this early game. Right now, it would be fun if he could just get a quick kill on that SCV. You know those SCVs? Uh, they don't they don't hold up very well against a well micro probe when trying to build these buildings. Oh my God! Okay, I thought he was gonna lose that probe by getting it stuck in that little divot, but no, he does get the probe loose. Probes are very elusive. They can hover through just about anything. Look at that! You see, it's just like there's no collision box on the SCV. He just flies right through it. <laughs> I, nothing is as good as the flying drone, of course. The flying drone is the most broken of the worker glitches. Um, but it is still fun to see uh, best micro that probe with great ability. So the command center coming on that low ground too, taking up that natural base. And Bind wants to get that fast economic advantage. Uh, but best, he is taking his own expansion, so there's nothing cheesy going on here. Just a normal standard play from both players. Oh, that refinery already already being uh, completed and being mined for gas. That's important. Remember last game that the refinery did not get to be built at an optimal time for a mine because Best went in there and he just proxy dropped that assimilator and went for the gas deal. So that was just a, a great early opening for, for Best who, you know, basically set the pace for the mine games in that first one. Uh, mind... How is he going to take control of this series? It is a, uh, I believe, a best of five. So, you know, each player is going to have to win three games in order to exit out of this um, best of series. Do you know that the Blizzard, there's a Blizzard tournament that has a best of seven as the uh, <laughs> the best of order? And seven games is a quite a lot, especially when it's outside of the finals or the round of four. I, I mean, that is just a ton of casting. So it's, it's going to be interesting, but I am excited to see these players and their endurance for a best of seven instead of a best of five. It's definitely going to take some next level of practice to be able to um, compete in a tournament of, of, of such long games. Can you imagine a best of seven TVT going all seven games? Man, I would start practicing my cheeses as a Terran player versus other Terrans. We don't see a lot of TVT cheeses either. 
So to back to focus on this game, we're seeing that the starport is being completed here. And it's almost basically this 1-1-1 build, which has become more popular um, in, in StarCraft 1. It's an actual thing where you just do one starport, one factory, one barracks. And you kind of get this interesting mix of units um, for some uh, early pressure in this game. Meanwhile, the scouting is going off. What is this SCV doing? Just checking to make sure that there are no hidden pylons around the map. Uh, you know, Protoss uh, players are known for, for putting pylons out to detect for drops. And I, I think that mind, whether it's going to be a Wraith or a, a dropship, wants to make sure that it's not going to be scouted when it comes out. So he's taking that whole view path. So it's definitely a dropship. He's taking the whole route that his dropship is going to take and making sure that there's not a single pylon along that entire stretch. Otherwise, he would choose a different route to navigate the map. So this is nice and very important for, for Best to be able to try and hold that bridge and just delay the units pushing past it as much as possible. This is going to be such an early aggressive build coming from Mind. Oh, you know how we were ta I talked about the 8 minute mark in game number 1? Mind loves that 8 minute mark. It, it's before Protoss has really been able to establish and sink its teeth into the map and, 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 and have that perfect build, that perfect setup off three bases. Instead, uh, what Mind wants to do is catch him on two bases before the tech is that solid and see what kind of damage he can do. So we're seeing a set of units, a particular set of tanks and marines on the low ground. What's inside that dropship? It's going to become, okay, two vultures, one tank. I'm going to be jumping in here. And uh, the dropship, is it going to stay out of the vision of best? <coughs> Excuse me there. So now we're seeing the dropship come down here. It's going to head straight for the high ground, I'm assuming. Might be able to get a few tank shots off on those probes, uh, which which could be very, very crucial. And look at that, the reveal of the, uh, of the Stargate too. So that tank is going to get quite a few probes, but the probes do get pulled. The mines are going to be a deterrent for those Dragoons, so they can't get in here quite so quickly. And there is vision of the high ground. So even though the shots uh, from the Dragoons aren't going to trade efficiently. Oh, they're not going to trade well at all. <laughs> and that tank is going to survive for a really long time. That vision is just not huge. Oh, and he's sieging up again. Gets that one single probe before he dies. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that last siege. Amazing. So the observatory coming down inside of the main base of the best. Uh, the dropship is still alive. It did manage to get back home. So with a little bit of repair, it can get right back into battle. Best is in a good spot, though. I don't think that did a ton of damage. He did pull enough probes um, that it wasn't anything critical. In mind, I, I would have liked to see him do more of that actual 8-minute push. Because if you look at the timer right now where it is 8 minutes, you see that he has 3, 4 more tanks. He's got several more vultures. And he could have applied a lot of pressure at the natural base and then tried to drop in from the back also. Well, I, I was wondering if this was going to be DTs because of that early gas. And I think that's what um, you know the observers were, were thinking too when they were watching this game at the beginning. Was, no, oh, look at the timing of this gas. It could be Dark Templar. And we do see Dark Templar. And the Dark Templar tech leads to the Arbiter tech. So it's, it's kind of a nice mix that you can get these DTs out. But you could also go for a fast two-base Arbiter play. Which Best is going to try and utilize in this game. You see the Templar Archives is completed there. The Citadel of Dune. Not doing any research right now. Oh, he pulls that mine right into the Dragoon. There's another one. Does he know? Oh, a double kill. Meanwhile, the tank is going to come down. It's going to be really hard to kill again. The dropship dies. And I think that was really sloppy by mine who could have kept it alive. Oh, and these DTs. The DTs, can they get in there and actually hit that tank? Or is he going to have to use range? Oh, this is brilliant. This is a brilliant spot for that tank to go down. But an observer comes in. Mine one, or best needed to be very, very careful because he can't afford to lose reckless dragoons anymore. And he didn't have quite the numbers to micro and one hit those mines very effectively. So that is why he just took his time. 
and and made sure that there weren't any hidden mines that he had missed or actually most of them he just dragged into his units because he just did not play that very well so the third base looks to be occupied very shortly by mind who's going to be expanding towards the high ground and he's got a nice corner this corner of the map for mind is, is going to be great as a terran player this is so nice that you can just defend over there with with such good strategic defensive position which is why arbiters are huge it, you can't do quite the same level of micro with carriers like you could on the previous map but on polaris you you can use arbiters to your advantage find the holes and it can be difficult to retreat your mech army into the main or the third base to defend against the arbiter recalls so that's what Bess is going to be looking for here so Vulture's going to be heading down on the right side. Meanwhile, an expansion is coming up at that 6 o'clock base. Uh, the third is finally going to be up. But again, because he got the Arbiter so fast, there's going to be a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, scans are going to be hugely important. Goliaths have been built, just a few, to try and pick off those Arbiters where possible. Uh, but I think that Mind really needs to make sure now that he's putting down those turrets. You know, most uh, Terran players will suggest uh, at least... In the early, uh, in the infancy of your playing, that if you do see Arbiter Tech finished, that is your signal to start putting up those turrets to defend against recall. Although some players wait even longer because they know that the recall research, you know, the energy uh, on those Arbiters takes a long time. I think it believes to, it's 200 energy. So you want to delay as much as possible needing to spend those resources. Okay. We got the Dragoons clearing out the right side, pushing back those Vultures, so there is no Vulture threat again. There's so much darkness splitting the min map, if you look at the mini-map here. Both players are just staying on either side, kind of respecting each other's boundaries, but at what point are, are we going to run out of boundaries to respect? I think that because this is such a large, tall map, it's going to allow this to be an even longer game than the previous one. And, it, you know, both players are going to have to rely on a lot of late game tech to give themselves an advantage where they can win this game. Science vessels being completed. Science vessels is another thing. When you see the Arbiter tech finished, that's when you start you know, getting your science vessels too because you want to make sure that you've got your EMP ready and so you can hit this Arbiter. Arbiter is going to try and bait out these EMPs potentially. Um... <laughs> If you can if you can get the uh, science vessel, that would be even better. But those science vessels, they're very cowardly. And they will be sitting on top of either Goliaths or turrets to make sure that the science vessel does not get hit by any stray patrolling dragoons. So this is interesting. There's two different armies that we can see um, from Best, who is the blue player. And up at the top right is one army. And then there's sort of this mid-central army. When while he's patrolling, he's actually taking an additional base at the top at the uh, four o'clock position, which is going to be really important for him too, because he, you can see the line of attack that Best wants to try and hit that twelve o'clock position. So he's going to have a lot of units moving upwards and being able to defend the right. And then at the six o'clock, it's just so far for the Terran army to move. Terran's not going to move out until they've got at least two two. Now, Terran wants to be able to have perfect mech upgrades before you can see that just ridiculous push out that makes the tanks almost near impossible to kill. They just basically evaporate uh, the zealots at a certain point. Okay, so here's the push. What is the upgrade? Just, oh my god, is he going to get it? <coughs> the EMP goes off! And oh, somehow there's still Arbiter energy, energy but another... another uh, Science Vessel does come in here to help out. And I think that this mech army is going to be just too strong. And Best is not going to be able to push in here. A solid defense. That first EMP was just so huge. You know, we always focus so much on the Arbiter energy. But the fact that it took the shields away from all of those Dragoons and Zealots that were under the Arbiter is hugely important too. Because it just weakened the army. It took almost away half of its durability. And so now we can see that mind is just going to be able to push forward here, take this high ground, and establish himself. He's almost going to be able to take half the map with this dominant win in the battle. 
Another unit coming down. A couple tanks sieging up. This is a real good spot again because he can start to push on the fourth base, only sending a few tanks inside of it, but within range of that Nexus. So the Nexus is going to start taking heavy, heavy damage. The Arbiters are still alive. Again, Best has to hold off and delay as much as possible before he can either use Stasis or Recall. So either of those abilities are just going to have to sit on hold. Despite the fact that he has his Arbiters for so long, it's such a shame that it didn't work out for him. Unless you're a Terran fan, of course. So... <laughs> this is a scattered brain best who doesn't know where he should go. If he tries to advance across that bridge, he is dead. Oh, what is going on here? This is an actual issue with the VOD itself. I wonder how long this takes before it gets fixed. Okay, let's see. I have the ability to fast forward. So I'm just going to go as far forward as I can here. <coughs> and that that was the producer of the video. Not, not me at all, but I do apologize for them in advance. Okay, so the Arbiter Recall, or the Arbiter Stasis coming down on those low ground tanks. It looks like Best did lose that base over to the right. We knew that was going to happen. And what? He's building a command center there. <laughs> oh maybe this is like a bm command center that's coming down mine has got to be feel feeling very confident for him to be able to do that kind of aggressive expansion there's not much left for best he's taking a really late fourth base down at the bottom left so his economy is pretty weak and he doesn't have a lot of room left for more gateways. So even with more economy, he's kind of limited to gateways and unless he can adequately hold on to the bottom left base and where he can build more production facilities. But at this point, I think that if, if mine can win one engagement against the main army of best, this is going to be him and he could tie it up 1-1. One, one. Are we going to be able to see that here? Where are the stasis... One stasis, very weak. No, best lost. Best lost. <laughs> oh, we kind of knew it was coming towards that anyway. So that's the end of game number two. A little anticlimactic ending, unfortunately, due to the weird VOD. But game three is going to be coming up shortly. Hang tight, guys.